how that we're able to update a individual product let's set up a way where we could delete a product so what we want to do is delete the product from the back end and also from the store and we have two delete buttons one within the product list component so we'll dispatch an action from this component to delete a product and then also when you're viewing an individual product you could also delete a product from this page so we'll create another action for that and we'll dispatch that action from the product item component so this is very similar to what we've been doing in the last several videos we'll need to create some ngrx pieces we'll create a total of four actions and then also we'll create an effect for removing a product from our back end and also we'll need to update the store and remove the product from the store like in the last video i'm going to be copying and pasting a lot of snippets because this is very similar to what we've been already doing if you would like to copy and paste as well you could always find the snippets link on the home page if you go down to video 45 and you'll be able to find the snippets on this page Back inside the products module, we'll open up all the files we'll need to work inside of. So let's open up the action file. We'll need to create a few actions in here. The effect file, we'll create that for dealing with our API and then the reducer file. So we'll need to update the store as well. Let's start inside the action. And right towards the bottom here, I'll paste a snippet right below the update section. We set this up in the last video. So right here, I'll replace these two boilerplate actions with my own snippet and this is going to be for deleting a individual product so the first action we're going to create is for dispatching from the product item component and to delete a product you need to pass in the product id so we're going to pass that in as a payload the second action i called it delete product we're going to dispatch this from the product list component and also you need to pass in the product id so we'll pass that in as the payload third action this one's going to get dispatched from the product effect file and you might notice a little difference here. We're not passing in a payload here. And the reason is, is we're going to optimistically remove a product from the store. What we've been doing in prior videos is after we successfully deal with our backend, then we update the store. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to optimistically update our store. So what we'll do is when we dispatch an action at this point, then we'll update the store immediately. And then we won't need to wait for the back end to update or remove the product. So therefore, we don't need to pass in a payload at this point because we're already updating the store at this point. So this is called optimistically updating the store. This is called pessimistically updating the store. And the last action I call delete product failure. Also, we'll be dispatching this from the product effect file. And here we'll pass in the error if there's any error as the payload. That's all we need to do inside the action file. Let's update the effect file next. So right below the update section that we set up in the last video, I'll paste another snippet right here. And this is gonna be for deleting a individual product. So in this case, we're listening for two actions that we set up, the delete product and the delete item product. They're both passing in the same payload of the product ID. We'll pass that off to the service, the delete product method to delete the product. We're already bringing in our service right here within the, within the constructor. And also we're already bringing in our actions and we're importing that up here at the top. So you wanna make sure you're doing that as well. So if we're successful at deleting a product, then we'll pass back this action, the delete product success. And you'll notice we don't need a payload here, so we're not passing in a payload. And then if there's any failures, we'll handle that as well. Now the reason we're getting this error here is this method right here is expecting a number and we're passing in a string. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We'll open up this service and you're looking for the delete product and that is this right here. And I'll change this over to string. This is gonna give me errors throughout different parts of the application, but that doesn't matter. We'll be taking care of that pretty soon. So I'll save this and shut this file down. And that's pretty much it for the effect file. You can save this and let's move on to the reducer file. And we'll do some cleanup work here. We'll remove this on method here. I removed this delete product action from our action file. So we don't need this anymore. This is just some boilerplate code that was given to us when we generated the file. And we'll reuse this on method here. 
and I didn't call it ID. I should have called it ID, but I called it product ID. So I'll make sure I just change this over. So what's happening here is we're listening for the delete product action we already created. And if that gets dispatched, we pass in the payload of the product ID. And we're going to use the remove one from the adapter. And this is going to remove an individual product by its ID. Also, we want to listen for a second action. This second action is being dispatched from our item component. So I'll make sure I add that here. I'll stack it onto the end here. And this is going to be delete item product. And this is also passing in a payload of product ID. So this will handle removing the product, but we also want to handle any failures. And we already have this on method for that. And this is where we stack all of our failure actions. So I'll add that towards the bottom here. And that's going to be product failure. And don't forget the comma. And that's all you need to do within the on method. Now we're ready to start dispatching actions and we'll do that next. Now that we assembled all of our NGRX pieces for removing a product, let's dispatch our actions from our components. So we're going to need to dispatch two actions from two different components and we'll take care of that. And also we need to set up some side effects to alert the user whenever there's a failure or if we're successful at deleting the product. And we'll take care of those side effects as well. Back inside of our project, we'll open up all the files we'll be working inside of. So inside of the product item, we'll be working in this TS file. And also the product list, open this up. And we'll be creating some side effects, so I'll go ahead and open those up. Open up your alert effects, the global alert effects file, and we'll reroute the user when they successfully delete a product when they're on the individual item page. So I'll open that as well. And we'll start inside of the product list page. And within the delete product method is where we'll dispatch our action. So this whole section here, we could just comment this out. I'll be removing this pretty soon. And also we wanna pass in a string, not a number. So we'll be passing in a string as a payload into our action. And here we'll dispatch our action. So I'll add that here. And I'm already bringing in the store. We set that up in a prior video. And we're bringing that in right here within our constructor. Also, we're already bringing in all of our actions and we're bringing that in right here. And that's all we need to do to dispatch our action from our product list component. And we'll take care of the side effects in a second. Let's jump over to the product item component. And we want to do the exact same thing in here. Like we'll comment out this whole section here. And we'll dispatch our action at the top. And don't forget to swap this over from a number to a string. And that should take care of your error here. So in this case, we're dispatching the delete item product action that we already set up. So we're dispatching our actions. Now we're ready to start setting up our side effects. So let's start off with the alerts. So we want to give the user an alert when they're successful at deleting a product. Let's do that next. And right towards the bottom, I'll paste another snippet. So we're going to create a total of three effects for our alerts. And the first one is going to be for when we remove the product from the store. And we're listening for two actions. If any of these actions get dispatched, we'll give the user a alert message letting them know that we removed the product from the store. Now at this point, we haven't deleted the product from the back end. So we'll give the user another alert message when we successfully remove the product from the database. So if the success action is dispatched, we'll give the user this alert message. Any failures, we'll give the user this alert message. And this will let the user know that they were unable to update the backend and will be listening for this action when this action gets dispatched. Now, this is a lot of typing, and keep in mind you'll find this snippet in the snippets page if you want to just copy and paste all this code. The next side effect we want to add is for rerouting the user. Let's do that next. So, we already have an effect here for rerouting the user to the product list page. So I'll just add on to the actions here. I'll stack on towards the end. So we're already bringing in our product actions. So I can just call in the from product actions. And I'm looking for the delete item product. So delete item product. And whenever that action gets dispatched, we'll reroute the user back to the product list page. 
That's all we need to do on this file. And we'll go back inside of the product list component and clean that up. And now we can remove all this dead code here. We don't need that anymore. And also while we're here, we could go inside of our services, remove the alert service and the product service. We don't need these anymore. And go up here and get rid of the imports. And we shouldn't have any errors. Everything should look fine. Save this file and let's move on to the product item. We'll clean that up. And we could remove all of this. And remove the services from within the constructor. So I'll get rid of all of this and the imports. And that's it for cleaning up. And now we're ready for testing. So let's restart the application. And let's check it out in the browser. Let's start deleting some products. So we'll open up our debugger so we can see our actions being dispatched. And I'll clear everything out. And let's delete our awesome product. Hate to do it. So I'll click on the delete button. So we should see our side effects kick in. So it lets us know that it was deleted from the store. And then later on, it'll let you know that it updated the database. So that's working fine. And then we see that the product list component was dispatched. We passed in the payload of the product ID. And then if we look at the difference from the last state to the current state, we removed the product from the store. So that's working fine. And then later on, it lets you know that it was successful at updating the backend. So this page is working good. And if you click on that again, you'll notice there's no spinner. The reason is, is we don't need a spinner because it's optimistically updating our store. It's doing it immediately. So we don't have to wait for the backend. And then we want to check to see if the individual product page is working correctly. So I'll clear everything out again and click on remove product. And we should see the action being dispatched for that. The product item component, delete product. If you click on that, we pass in a payload of the product ID 65 in that case. We look at the difference and we remove the product from the store. And now we're able to delete products from our store.